What's going on, Fast Turn Radio watchers, listeners, replay catchers, gompers, if you're out there, what's up? Everybody, I hope you're having a great Q4. Uh, I had a definite Q4 moment just a few minutes ago. As uh, I don't know if you guys have done this lately, but I, I just kind of randomly fall asleep at certain points. If I'm sitting on the couch for too long, it's just I have not gotten a good night's sleep in weeks. Now, I've gotten more than some people, uh, probably less than others. But I am prone to just fall asleep for a few minutes. And I sure did that and almost missed my own show. But it is all coming to an end very soon. Um, we sent out our last big shipment on Monday. And that had a lot of oversized stuff. Um, that it, And it actually did not make the truck Monday, which hurts a little bit. But it did go out on uh, essentially on Tuesday. Some of that stuff has been delivered. And hoping that it gets received either tonight or tomorrow, that would be nice. Um, lots of oversized stuff that is selling for a lot of money right now. Things are looking great. Um, sales have been solid, I would say. I, I, I don't know what I expected. I had high expectations, I, I will say that. I had high expectations for this Q4. Uh, we have not met some of those, but at the same time, when you're doing four, five, six thousand dollars a day in sales when you're normally doing one or maybe two, um, you know, how upset can you be? But we still have a lot of inventory, which surprised me. I thought we'd be down to almost nothing, but we're still sitting about the same mark, if not maybe a little more than where we started kind of the the, the big push. Uh, you know, right around that six thousand, I think we have maybe sixty two hundred units right now. Um yeah, Mindy asked how, how many units do you have? And I can actually pull that up. Can't show you guys because it'll show a little too much, but I will pull up um, where we're sitting in the Manage FBA inventory. Yeah, we have 5,400 standard size units and 805 oversized. So yeah, right at 6,200 units. I expected really to have almost no units at this point, but uh, just the way Q4 is gone, you know, you, you saw Black Friday kind of hit the big toys that were in high demand, uh, busted butt, got a lot of that kind of stuff, got it shipped in. The speculation maybe didn't go so well. We've sold off a lot of the speculation at this point where it, you know, maybe lost a little money, maybe made a little money, but you just, you could tell it was just dead in the water. So we killed it, shot it, moved on. Uh, so right now, what's there is really the high demand stuff that's selling as soon as it lands, which is awesome. It just, we need Amazon to do their part. Now that we've all done our part, we need Amazon to do their part and get this stuff in place. And they have not done a great job of that. As I'm sure many of you have noticed, uh, it is just killing everyone. I think with the, the trans shipping times, trans shipping being, uh, you send to a, 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 distribution center and when they turn around and ship to their other fulfillment centers that's called trans shipping so we ship it to amazon and then their their shipping within the amazon infrastructure is trans shipping um let's see john c says i crush cotton candy machines you know something was pointed out to me i bet you didn't crush cotton candy machines i i thought i did too uh, if you got the Black Friday cotton candy machines, they are not the ones selling for $55. They are the ones that are selling for $25 or $35. Uh, the one that's selling for $55 is a slightly different version, and we were not supposed to be selling on that one, which I myself was guilty of. I totally messed that up. But just, uh, it happens. So just keep that in mind. That You know, same thing with the... Uh, Doc McStuffins checkup table, which I got all excited about. I said $35. I only got seven of them. And somebody pointed out the other day that it was maybe not exactly the same as I thought the uh, $119 listing was that I was on. Some of that stuff is just so hard to match. Uh, Mindy says he created the listing for the Walmart one. Okay. Um, what was different? So I know what I was told and I, I would have to look, but it, I think it was the number of sticks that come with the cotton candy machine. So that was the, um, from what I understand, that was the difference. So, um, all right. 
Oh, one, one thing. Okay. This, this is a change that just came to mind that I want to throw out there because I usually just say, if you have anything to say, come on camera. Uh, one, one thing that was brought to my attention is when I have guests on and we have back and forth, it kind of makes the screens flip back and forth and it becomes distracting from again, from what I've been told. Uh, so the feedback was, unless there is a planned guest, it is better if you do not come on camera. Uh, it was just taking away from the show. So I do want to put that out there as much as I appreciate input from people uh, in the conversation that I have with them. If you could only plan guests come on camera from now on. That is just a, just a new way that I'm going to run the show. Um, so just put it out there. It hurts me a little bit, but at the same time, it is something that I think makes the show better instead of the distraction of flipping back and forth and kind of people coming in and, and not having a, uh, a set format. Uh, I guess what it was, yeah, which is kind of how I do things a little haphazard. Uh, it was just brought to my attention that that was maybe not the best way to do things. So we're going to try it from now on only scheduled guests, but thank you for understanding. Um, all right. So back to the Q4 thing. Um, yeah, the Doc McStuffins, I guess, had fewer tools uh, on some listings than, than others. Anyway, so just be very careful when you're out there doing that stuff. I mean, you know, mistakes happen and nobody does it intentionally, I don't think. I totally overlooked both of those and I sent in, I think, on the wrong listing on both of them. Um, just be careful. All right. So and Diane says she liked them coming in. See, you're never going to make everybody happy. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Um, yeah. So, all right. So Q4, we are dead in the heart of it. Um, it's interesting because things are heating up and at the same time, they're slowing down. Okay. The, the, the high demand toys are getting higher and higher in demand. You see the prices skyrocketing on some of this stuff. And other things, there's 200 sellers, and we've got essentially seven days left uh, to sell this stuff. And you got people that are, are are getting out of certain lines, and they're like, "Hey, it's just not going to happen." Like I already mentioned, there are some things that I've already shot, and I just said, "Forget it. You're done. You're not going to pop. I don't see you going anywhere. I'm getting rid of you." Uh, so you're going to see selling off take place over the next few days on on some of those more crowded listings. And I think at the same time, you're going to see a lot of, excuse me, a lot of ridiculous pricing on the high demand items. Uh, there's one that I saw go from $65 just a couple of days ago to $85 today where I sold out. And now there's only three, three sellers, I think, um, all back ordered. And, you know, it's a, it's a top 5,000 toy. There's nobody had, nobody has it. There's just nobody has it. So that kind of opens a window. If you can get the toy that opens the window to MF, if you want to go that route with it, um, at some point, those FBA sellers that are back ordered will be in. I don't think you have a prayer unless you have premium placement of actually getting the toy in place and in stock in time to sell for Christmas. But you, this is the time that you should be doing a lot of repricing, watching those prices seeing that something that was $27 and then 29 and then 31 is, you know, maybe you want to sell at 35 or maybe you want to sell at 39. And if you hold out a couple of days, it may just hit there. Uh, <laughs> Allison, Allison said is nothing sacred. Um, no, nothing is. So uh, mystery Shopkins, I don't know if you guys saw that one. Uh, that, that thing's up to like $90 now, which is insane. You know, that, that I sold mine feeling good about it. I sold mine for 72 like a week ago. And now it, it's up in the 90s. It's crazy. Um, let's see. Kara Reinerson says, I sold the Mystery Shopkins for 125 in Canada. There you go. Um, one, okay. Leron saying there is one seller at 72. Uh, Dale got out at 73.50. Yeah, it, it's just, but you're going to see that. I mean, that's just one of the examples of something that's just absolutely taking off and there's almost no sellers. And there's, there's a few of those items and I'm hoping 
that even stuff that I sent, I did send some on Monday that went out apparently yesterday uh, that are standard size. And they will not be there until maybe at the earliest, the 22nd, but I'm hoping I can nail them. Uh, I'm hoping they can get in stock and just sell through in a heartbeat. But I don't know. Uh, maybe they'll have some legs after Christmas. That's the other thing. Uh, Andrea says, turning off my repricer because all the back orders are preventing my price from adjusting up. That is something I'm going to talk to the coaching group about, but I'll talk to, a, uh, talk to you guys about it here too. That is something huge. And I talked with John Grillo about it and he kind of pointed it out. And as we discussed it, I think it is absolutely true. Where in past years, when people were doing more manual repricing, um, you would you would see these you know, items take a hit, but maybe that one low guy that came in, let's take Mystery Shopkins for an example. Let's say selling steadily at 90. Well, one guy sold out at 72, all right? So he sells out, no problem. Everybody gets up to, to $90. If he has some stock that now comes back in at that 72, in years past, not as many people were using auto repricers. So most people stayed at that 90 level. They just let 72 sell out. No big deal. It's back up to 90 pretty quickly. Now there are so many repricers out there that that 72, you know, the repricers all go off. Bing, 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 bing. And now you got, you know, maybe 10 people that all drop to the 72 number. And now you have to wait for everyone to sell out in order to, to see the price start coming back up. So auto repricers, I think, have really beat down prices quite a bit. I have not used mine in Q4. Uh, not, not, my plan was to use it and have it kind of price up for me. When I figured out that that was not happening and that it was actually matching the back ordered numbers and I was getting sales by being in stock, I could be several dollars uh, higher than the back ordered numbers, and I would get the sales because people were skipping past the back order, going, "Hey, I want the, the product that's in stock." If I had my repricer set, I would be matching those back ordered prices. Not at all what I want. I want to be the highest in stock person that I could be, uh, and still get the sales. So I would turn off the repricer. The exception would be when I saw something, and um, it hit my number. Okay, it popped and say I wanted to sell at 35. Okay, here's my repricer, uh, or here's my item at 35. I would take the ASIN, find it in my repricing tool, and say, okay, minimum, 35. Now, as that sells out, it, 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 or, or maybe my minimum, maybe it's at 35, and I say, yeah, my minimum, I'll, I'll keep it at 32. Then I would let it kind of take over for me. I guess what I'm saying is I would consciously make the decision that this product needs to go now and in this range and I would plug it into my repricer and then I would walk away from it and I would let it do its job. But I did not just go in and set min minimums on everything and let my repricer take over. I've done a ton of manual repricing. Uh, and I, Mindy said his reprices every 15 minutes. Mine does too. Um, mine, mine goes off every 15 minutes. That's it says continuous. I use App Eagle. It says continuous. It's actually about every, every uh, I think, 12 to 19 minutes or maybe 14 to 19 minutes. I haven't looked at it in a while, but that's that's where it was going. Um, <laughs> yeah, and Kara said she's figured out that repricers are working once an hour. I'm taking advantage of that. Now, repricers are set up. They're all quite different. But yeah, the, the quickest one I know is every 15 minutes. Some are, are hourly different systems different use different time frames so um all right and craig says if you want it quick go in and do it manually celery is instant nothing nothing is instant uh, there is nothing instant not because it has to ping the api every time so there's there's no way i mean it, it would just I, I don't see it if i'm wrong I, i'll stand corrected but I don't believe anything is actually instant because it has to go in there and pull that data and it, it hits the system. And uh, when it comes back, it goes, Oh, okay, this is the situation now. So it might be every three minutes, every five minutes, but it, it does have to ping that system. So yeah. And Dale says, I thought Amazon has a limit on the amount of times it can hit the API. I think it does too, but 
anyway, I don't, I'm not a programmer. I'm not getting into that. What I'm telling you guys, <laughs> we're, we're getting into a lot of boring crap if we go down that road. What I'm telling you is I took an approach of more manual pricing versus the auto repricing. It just, it was not working very well. Um, it will match those backordered prices because when it pulls the information, it sees a backordered FBA seller the same as it does somebody that's in stock and, and customers do not see that. So you, to me, you're better off not relying on the technology that we have available. And in this case, you just do it yourself. But when I did see something in the range I wanted it to be, then I let my repricer take over. Um, that was just, you know, one, one of the, that was one of the things I noticed in Q4. And I think it does keep the prices beat down because of that recovery time. So many people will drop so quickly to whatever that bottom number is. It just, it's killer. Uh, trans shipping times again are awful. Uh, so much stuff is on back order. It's making it almost impossible to, to have any idea of how much actual inventory you have and when it's going to be available. I mean, I'm seeing stuff that says, you know, I sent in on, uh, like November 27th and it's landing December 16th. It, it, you know, it hit today. I'm like, man, really three, three weeks from, the time I created the shipment until it was actually live. Uh, commingling did not help me reduce back orders. Julie, I agree. I tried commingling and I did not see a difference with things being uh, available any sooner. I, I, I expected it to, and it's just not, not the way it is. Uh, yeah. And then Michael says, also takes time for the actual new price to propagate. Exactly. So, you know, even if you go in right now and you tell, I did this with um, a top 100 toy today, right? I had 57 of them. And I said, I'm going to sell about half of these. I just wanted to get rid so no, they were in that neighborhood, but I think there's potential that it goes higher. So I was like, let me sell about half. What I did was I set the price. I waited, took about five minutes before I started seeing sales. As soon as I started seeing sales, I turned it back off. You know, I, I upped my price from like 30 to 35. So I was like, by the time this goes through the system and it turns it off, I'm going to blow through half of this. And sure enough, 15 minutes later, I went through about 20 units in just a few minutes because it does, it, it will take the system time to adjust your price, to get you out of the buy box, to let the next person come into the buy box. Man, it is so hard to, to plan all this stuff, but that's, that's where, that's my work now. That's my job. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. I have done the manual packing and shipping. I have done the sourcing. Now I sit in front of the computer a lot of hours of the day watching my pricing, trying to figure out where, where's the next thing that's going to pop? Where's it going to pop to? What's on its way down? What needs to be shot now? Um, yeah, and that's, that's what I spend a good part of my day doing. Uh, Jean, Dean Giroux says, I have premium placement and hit the warehouse on Monday and still waiting to be checked in. Ah, oh, that stinks, man. See, that was one of my thoughts was that premium placement make a huge difference because I could still be shipping right now. Um, <laughs> Kara says, I thought I was neurotic doing that. Glad to hear you're doing it too. Yeah, really. I think that's our job right now. That, that is what we are responsible for doing is, is our own pricing. That's, that's my opinion. Uh, Sarah says PP made a difference for us. Yeah. You and, and Mindy being able to get premium placement, I think it's just fantastic. So good job on that. Uh, Allison, I know has used premium placement to her advantage. She's done a great job with it. Um, yeah, checked in Mindy saying one day inbound checked in within 48 hours. Now with premium placement, the one thing you have to keep in mind is you're paying 75 cents a unit, just in case nobody knows somebody out there is listening and doesn't understand. Premium placement is different than inventory placement. You pick which warehouse your stuff goes to. It's not a, a simple uh, edit selection in, in, your, um, in your settings. You have to request, you open up a case and, and request that you be given premium placement services. It will cost you 75 cents per item, regardless of the number of items that you send in or where they would, would um, normally go. So you have to factor that in. You don't want to send a bunch of $4 items that you're selling for uh, $11. If you want to you know, start factoring in your prep and inbound and now premium placement, I mean, you're going to eat up those 
two and three dollar profit items that makes it not worth it but you know you get eight ten twenty dollar profit items which are very easy to do this time of year it'll make a world of difference for you uh there are some things that i found that i sent in as as tests and i'm thinking oh my god I, I want pallets of this stuff and if i had access to premium placement you better believe i would be literally sending pallets um uh, but i don't have it and so i'm just sitting on the sidelines thinking what could have been now michael says uh premium placement while we're talking about that does not prevent your inventory from being moved around to another warehouse uh, so it it really only controls where your stuff goes uh, he said, my inventory this year is seeing more of the country than I have in my lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stuff is just, oh, it's brutal. It is truly brutal. So premium placement means your stuff will go to the warehouse that you select and it will be live from that warehouse, but they still may, if you send a hundred units, they still may send 90 of them somewhere else. And therefore it may not help you a whole lot. And I say may, because you never know. You don't know. It's Amazon's game. It's still their world that we're playing in. But you, you do have to be very cognizant of what's going on and knowing about the trans shipping and knowing about the pricing. And if things are on the way down and there are 200 sellers, kill it. It's not going to get better. If it's on the way up and there's 200 sellers, give it some time. If it's on the way up and there's 10 sellers, oh my God, give it some time. Uh, but there's no right answer. Somebody asked me about that earlier. She said, can you kind of speak to, you know, uh, her example was an item that she sent in that was worth uh, or had a $15 profit when she sent it. And right now, if she sold it, she would take a loss. What she's supposed to do with it. Sounds to me like that one is definitely on a downward trend. I'd shoot it. I'd take my losses. If you have some reason to think it's going to rebound in January or it has a prayer of rebounding in the next six days, I guess you can hold out. I don't have a lot of faith in, in my inventory that is over retail being worth anything in a week. Now it, it may be worth a small fortune right now. And I did take a chance on some things and it may pan out. It may not, but by and large, I do not plan on things being uh, worth much over retail in a week. You know, Christmas will be here next Friday. So a week from now will be the 23rd. That'll be the last day that people can use overnight shipping to get their stuff on on uh, Christmas Eve and have it ready for Christmas. So next Tuesday is going to be basically your last day. Then the 23rd, you'll see some sales. The 24th and 25th, just don't even look at your account. Just just walk away. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll hurt you. Uh, we looked at that a couple weeks ago with my numbers, and we did like 100 bucks on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. It was horrible. Uh, yeah, it's just, but there's better things going on than, than looking at your account anyway. But yeah, it will, um, it will, it will be ugly. So we're, we got this high for another week. We're going to be able to ride this high and, and, you know, enjoy Q4 for what it is. But very soon it's all going to come crashing down. Hmm. And good news. I just noticed we are at 54 people in the chat room. So we have raised the 50 person limit. Um, Allison says that if it is high ranking and sells fast, they don't move it really. Maybe I'm just lucky, lower, lucky, low ranking rather. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Low rank, high rank. It all depends how you're looking at it. Yeah. If you have a top 100 toy, it's going to sell out before it has a chance to move. You know, I sold literally those, those 20 or so units in about 15 minutes today. I mean, it, you know, it's flying. Um, uh, you need to also consider how deep others are. Absolutely. Um, and the rank and the velocity. Yeah. They're, they're, this is where you have to actually work on your business. You have to pay attention to all these things. You need to go in and add to court. How many people are, are on this or how many uh, units does this person have? And what are the, what's the likelihood they'll sell out? I've had some success with that, but normally not a lot. And I'll give you a perfect example today. I said, okay, I think it was our buddy Toyberg, maybe either that or Toy Kings Online. I don't know. It was, it was one of the, the bigger names that I've seen. Uh, they had 25 of a product ranked 1500. And I said, okay, you're about, what is it? $10 below where I want to sell at. And I set mine actually at $20 higher, but it's, it was about $10 more than I wanted to sell out, sell at. 
I said, okay, I'm going to wait for you to sell out. Then I'm going to bust through my units either at, you know, $10 less than where I'm at now or at my price. So, you know, I'm playing around the $90 price range. So they were at 70. I'm thinking I can sell at 80 if I want to. I might push it, try to get 90. So while I'm playing that game, guess who comes in? Not, you know, Toyberg, yeah, they, we can complain about them if you want to or whoever else. Yeah, Amazon came in and the price obviously is back to retail. So now I have to hope that Amazon sells out in the next few days and I am still able to make a profit. So there's one where I, I tried to gamble, tried to, to play the odds and watch my competition and figure out um, what was going to happen. You know, going to make that extra $10 because I didn't want to, you know, yeah, whatever. Good on me. I just got smacked. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, anyway, but you, you can, you can analyze that stuff. You should be, you know, you do not want to match. If you've got a hundred units and someone else has two, you probably don't want to match if you can get a little more money out of them. Um, but there's a lot to be said for just getting your money and, and moving on. And this is the time where you're kind of cashing out. Q4, Q4 is, your time to make a lot of money and to launch your following year. You know, uh, in this case, Q4 2015 sets up your entire 2016. It gives you that cash flow that maybe you didn't have. And nobody has enough cash in Q4. It was the only time all year that I ran out of money. There, uh, you know, it was, it was a little tight. It was a little ugly. But got a nice healthy payout a couple weeks ago. Got another one coming this Friday. We can take a look at that. Um, but now you, you set up. Uh, and to clear out, yeah, and you got to clear out items that will be hit with long-term storage fees. Denise, good, good point. We now have those six-month storage fees. Um, so if you sent something prior to August fifteenth, I believe it is, then on August, then on February fifteenth, you're going to be served. Uh, you're going to be hit with storage fees. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, people are giving me a hard time about loans and credit cards and all that stuff. Hey, you guys do your business your way. I'll do mine, mine. But, uh, you know, when that payout comes, that's all cash in my hand. That's it. That, that's, that's cash in my bank, and I'm happy with that. I don't have to give any of that to anybody. No one gets any piece of it. It's all mine. So we all run our businesses the, the way we see fit. I run mine on a cash basis. It's just how I like it. Ah, see, Mary's on my side. She said, I get anxiety about credit cards. I just don't like credit cards. And yeah, it's just one more thing to, to worry about. Not worth it to me. But to each their own. All right. So that's a little bit about the Q4. We can get into uh, any more of it if, if you guys have questions, thoughts as we get into it. But yeah, we got a week left to, to kind of shoot the ones that pop, kill the, the ones that are just dogs. You know, um, if you got Peppa Pig, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not happy about some of the stuff that uh, I bought into. You know, that may be one that, that's just got to be put out to pasture. <laughs> Dale Selmeyer, I won't say exactly what he said, but he typed in the chat room. He is not a fan of Peppa. Um, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so let, let's take a look at the actual numbers. All right, let me get the screen back up. All right, we are, Michael, what's up, man? All right, let's get up screen share. All right, hopefully you guys can see my numbers. Um, we have two unshipped MF orders and we have put out 31 MF orders in the last seven days. That's kind of what I'm doing now. I've transitioned from, uh, you know, the FBA, the big push to get all that stuff in to MF, you know, merchant fulfilling. Some people call it seller fulfilling, whatever you want to call it. That's what we're doing. Um, it's just what, uh, it, it's kind of my bridge between Amazon screwing up the shipping and being able to still make money in these next seven days. There is a huge opportunity, I think. So I'm happy with the way things are looking. I got a couple on shipped orders. I got some more stuff that I'm going to list MF today. But the seven day totals, uh, 40,000, 15 day is 81,000 and 30 day is 140,000 in sales. I am extremely happy with that. 
Uh, last disbursement was 34,000. This one so far is 45,000. I'm hoping that we hit 50,000. I would like a $50,000 payout. That's almost ridiculous to hear myself say, I'll be honest with you. I know people have bigger payouts than that. I know people have much smaller ones, but I look at $50,000, again, forget profits, forget cost of goods. I don't care about any of that stuff when I'm looking at the payouts. Yes, I know it's important, but that is cash in my bank. That is money that will be sitting in the bank. And once it disperses, Amazon has no control over it. Okay, They can suspend an account. They can do this and that. But once that money is dispersed, that's mine. That is more money than I made in the first several years of my working life. And that's a two-week disbursement. That, to me, is ridiculous when I think about it. I have seen some disbursements that are in the hundreds of thousands of dollars that are several years salaries for some people. And these are two weeks. That, that is a two week payout. In the, now, of course, a lot of this money was reinvested, but if you just look at it on the surface, in the last two payouts right now, we're looking at $80,000 in payouts. Now again, that money was reinvested, but some of that is still moving too. That's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> that is hard for me to, to wrap my mind around when I see 45,000 knowing when I was in the air force, I was making $20,000 a year. Yeah. You know, when, when I, when I got hired at Bell South at and I think I was making like 26,000, $27,000 a year to start there. Uh, just insane. And, and in two weeks, it's like, here's 50 grand, which one to do, you know, plus what's already there, plus the inventory that's, uh, that's going to come out or be sold. Our last two disbursements last year, the 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 uh, one right before Christmas, which is this one, and the one after Christmas were our two biggest because we sold so much stuff basically during this week that will be shipped next week that will add to it. So uh, we have a couple of big, big, healthy uh, payouts coming. Very excited about that. Speaking of which, um, you know, one thing that, that we need to start doing is transitioning back to Q1. And I saw some questions about what do you do for Q1? Does velocity slow down? That kind of thing. Yes, velocity absolutely does slow down. It goes back to probably September, October, whatever your velocity and sales were then. That's about what you can look forward to in January. Maybe a little more if you're uh, better positioned, you're probably going to have a little more inventory. But we've started to, uh, you know, place those orders. I'm looking at some of the wholesale items that I've fallen behind on. And I just placed a $3,500 order to shore some of that up today. Uh, I bought some inventory that I knew was going to do better in January. It'll do well now, but it'll also do well in January. Maybe not better. That's probably the wrong term, but it will do well in January as well as right now. So it's just time to start looking at what's going to do well January, February, March. That's what you ought to be buying right now. Um, yeah. And SCR says my normal selling items are depressed in November, January. Can't wait until January. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully some of that stuff will bounce back for you. Um, so, all right, let's get into the reports. Yeah. Things are always going to fluctuate. All right. So we're having a uh, very, very good day today. Um, I, I thought we might have a $10,000 day the way it started and the amount of inventory I thought would hit, but it looks like some of that inventory will not be received until tomorrow. So you know what? I'm not going to complain about a $5,000 day though. Uh, yesterday was, whoa, almost shot my mouse across the desk. All right. Uh, yesterday was 8,000. Today we're at 57, almost 5,800. So probably going to end somewhere around that seven to 8,000 mark again. I'm happy with that. ASP is ridiculous compared to normal year over year or the, the rest of the year, you know, normally, normally we run about a 22 to 24 ASP right now. It's at 36. So definitely excited about that uh, month to date. I have no idea. 84,000 sweet, just shy of 85,000. So probably, you know, going to have a hundred thousand dollar month. I am fairly confident of that with the amount of inventory that we have and what's already, or what's on its way that, that should be hitting. Um, which beat last month at 79,000. 
which had the, see, and that's an overinflated number because we did like 11,000 just on uh, Cyber Monday, which happened to fall on November 30th. So that's a, that's almost a, a false number. But anyway, it is what it is. We'll go year to date of January, January 1st through today. And you will see, yes, we have crossed the 500,000. Yay! Yeah, I posted that earlier on Facebook. It's a good feeling. It, it's, it's just a number, honestly. But, you know, when you set a goal and you actually achieve that goal, it feels pretty good. So very excited. And Sarah said, congrats. Thank you. And ev thank you, everybody who posted on, in the Facebook uh, on posted on the Facebook thread. Um, I appreciate it. Michael Flanagan, this is all because of you. <laughs> it's all your fault that I worked this hard to get to the half million. Uh, you set the goal out there way back in January, I think it was. Now you're talking about, yeah, we got to do a million. I don't know if I'll do a million, but uh, I'll tell you what, I, I'm happy at, at 516000 not taking any loans, not owing anybody any money, and just having built this on a straight cash basis. And having paid myself on occasion throughout the whole journey. <laughs> we, we, we've lived a pretty good lifestyle in the last couple of years. So no complaints. Very happy about this business and the way it's all come together. Uh, Andrea said, is this your third or fourth Q4? This is our third. I started in January. I heard about FBA in uh, in October of 2012. And I wish I would have jumped on it then, but I waited until January of 2013. So we had Q4 2013, 2014, and this is our third one in 2015. And uh, a lot changed, a lot of, I learned a lot. I saw some trends that were year over year that are still consistent. I saw some things that I totally did not expect. Uh, it's just amazing to see how one year can be very similar and totally different all at the same time from the, the prior year or years. Uh, Mary says, did you do all retail? No, we are primarily retail. Um, but then I also do, I, I would say our, our, and I don't know what the percentages are, but we are mostly retail, followed by wholesale, followed by a little bit of, of OA. Uh, you know, and, and it is the vast majority is retail and, and wholesale. And then there's just a sliver of OA in there. But after Black Friday, it becomes almost all um, all retail. Whereas, you know, so I sent in the wholesale stuff well in advance. I wanted to make sure that most of the wholesale stuff was, it was in place in October. So it was ready for November, December, January. And uh, so it, once those shipments were taken care of and those products were in place, then I was able to focus on the retail side. Um, of course, some of those things sold out and I did not do a good job of, of restocking those and that, that I kind of kicked myself over. Um, there's one product that I totally missed that, that has six sellers ranked 3000 in kitchen and dining. And it's a wholesale product that um, I ran out of stock on. I've had zero in stock for about six weeks now. And that's just unacceptable. You know, that, that's just easy money sitting there. Uh, Michael Flanagan says next year will be more than 50% wholesale to get you over a million. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's possible. And John says, I am looking to do two and a half million with my new contracts. I think they mean that I may be setting my goals low. Wow. John, that's awesome, man. That is very, very impressive. So, you know, and, and I'm going to come up short on some of my goals. What, is there anything, do you guys have any questions about the, the road to 500K? Yeah, actually, I'm going to do a little recap, but I'll, I'll take it off camera. Is there anything you guys need to see on the actual numbers? Any, any questions you have about any months or uh, categories, any of that category splits? Okay. Yeah, we can, we can show you the top 20. I don't want to go too far. There we go. All others. Okay. So toys is by far our number one product, both um, overall, like in, in total sales units and our overall sales revenue. 
so we we sold 56 almost 5700 units for $142,000 this year. Uh, grocery is second with just under 5000 units and $87,000 and it just goes on down the line. Uh, kitchen, home, health and personal care, shoes, clothing, outdoor just on down the list. So you can see uh, I'm not going to read everything. If you're listening to this on the audio, maybe you want to take a look at the YouTube channel if you want to see the actual breakdowns. I'm not going to bore you by reading through the numbers on all of it. But our, our top three uh, or four, I'll do the top top four revenue categories were toys, grocery, home appliance, and kitchen. That's That was the, what? That's probably about 60%, maybe even 70%. I'd have to, to look, but that's... That was the vast majority of our revenue. You know, 142,000 in toys, 87,000 in grocery, 56,000 in home, and 46,000 in kitchen. So right there, that's what, 223, 320 out of the 500,000. Uh, okay, and Alan asked, any chance you will show 2013 just, just for growth reference? I don't think I can. Not that I mind showing it. I just don't think I'm able to. No, see, I can only go back two years. Uh, it just it won't it won't let me go that far back unless I pull some other. Uh, I can I can pull that through like the sales reports. Let me take you off camera for a second because I don't want to accidentally show something. But I think if I go into my sales by month. or the, the sales by date. I think one of those I can go into it. And it'll let me back up a whole lot further. So give me just a second. I'm gonna see how far, nope, that one doesn't do it. <laughs> John says, I'll show my inventory if you show yours. No, I don't think I will. Thank you though. <laughs> it's, that's quite all right. Um, no, it's only letting me go back the two years. It, it will not let me go back the three years. Um, man, I thought I could. That kind of stinks. All right, let me bring the uh, screen share. I'm sorry, guys. Let me bring the screen share back up. This is as far back as I can go. Okay, so it only it only lets me go back to January first, twenty fourteen, um, through December twenty fifteen. But you'll see January first of fourteen was twelve thousand, and then February nine, March ten, right on. You guys can see this again. I'm not gonna. Why? Well, I guess I can't. March, May was six, June was six, July was eleven, August twenty fourteen was nineteen thousand. September was 12, October was 12, November was 32, December was 69. Okay, that, that was all the 2014. Then 2015, we went from uh, 12,000 in January 2014 to 23,000 January of 2015. So almost doubled it. And then it, it continued to, to double pretty much every month. So again, um, you know, running twenties and thirties for most of the months, August, we jump up to 60, September 50, October 60, November 80, uh, 79, 79, sorry. And then right now we're at 84,000 for December. And I expect to end December somewhere between a hundred and 120,000. So, um, I would give you the, the growth. I will tell you this, not that it matters a whole lot. Um, we did 115,000, I think, or 101,000 maybe. That's where 101,000 our first year, and then 215 our second year, and now a little over 500,000 in our third year. So Andy or uh, Alan, excuse me, you asked about the year over year. That kind of gives you the idea of what our, our year over year last two have been. I I can't go back to 2013, but trust me, just suffice it to say, it was anemic compared to what we're doing now. But it takes time to grow. It takes time to build that cash flow. That's the biggest thing that's changed. I started with $1,500. And now I have more money, more knowledge, a better network, 
better products. Just uh, overall, I understand this business better. And so I know there are opportunities. And when I see them, I jump all over them. But even now, I, I'm a little skittish. I, you know, there's something that I should have bought literally 100 of that I bought 10 because I went, man, it looks great. But can it really be that great? Sure enough, it is. It absolutely is. And I wish I would have bought a uh, hundred of them. Uh, so I, I still kind of temper myself. I still have that that reserved part of me that does not allow me to just blast money in every direction. But I do try to take more risks than I used to. Some of those pay off. Some of those do not. It just, you know, you learn. And the ones that do, you look at it and go, why did this work? And the ones that don't, you go, why didn't that work? And you're constantly analyzing and learning from your mistakes as well as your successes. And Julie says, me too. There are a few products I wish I went with my gut. Yeah, and there's always going to be those. You know, and there's some that I sent like 12 test units and they sold out the day they got there. And I went, okay, apparently I needed all of them. You know, there were like 100 at the store. Again, literally you know, 100 of them. I took 12. Wish I would have got them all. It happens. But you know, I'll kind of file that away. And when I see that product again, this time of year, and I'm going to track it through the year and see how it does. But definitely this time of year, next year, if that opportunity is there, I will jump all over it because a lot of these products repeat themselves. There are products I sold this year that I've sold every year in December. And when I saw it on the, I'd actually forgotten about it. And I saw it on the shelf and I went, I remember you. And I grabbed them all and I sent them in and all that I've cleared out every store I can find and the stores restock and I go and get them again and all of them have sold. If you, even if you watched my store, you would not know what this product is because it's in stock for about 30 seconds and then it just, it's gone. And it just, every year it's a good one. So you will start to learn those. So it becomes less of a concern. Do I buy them all? Yeah, you buy them all. Cause you know, you've got about eight minutes worth of, of stock sitting on the shelf and you just blow through that stuff. And so you'll, you'll, Kind of have those products in the back of your mind as this time of year comes and you start buying deeper and you start buying better. So that's why I am constantly testing. I test this year and apply it to next year. And Michael Flanagan is much better than I am at this, but he actually writes the stuff down. Whereas I rely on my 40 year old memory that is not as good as it used to be. And I should write it down, but things change. Uh, but some things stay the same and you start to see those trends. There are certain toys. There are certain home products. There are certain kitchen products. There are products in every category that do well this time of year, every year. And get to know those. Remember those. Know them for next year. Uh, Andrea says, my biggest sleeper were the, <laughs> were the starlights. Found in my research in October. Tried to source wholesale, then forgot about it. Big mistake. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, starlight or star showers. Those those things were uh, they were amazing. They went from the biggest meh products because they you know they were forty dollars selling for sixty five. There's no money in that. There you know maybe fifty five. There was no money. Now if you could get them at thirty and sell them at fifty five, you're gonna you're gonna squeak out a few dollars and then you're gonna squeak them out very fast. I mean it was ranked number one in home improvement, right? So. It's obviously flying. So if you could get them for 30 and sell for 55, that, that was good. But if you were getting them for 40 at 55, that doesn't really work. And then it started getting to 65, 69. And then all of a sudden they went ballistic, you know, 120, 140, whatever it got up to. It was insane. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Diana says someone was returning two to Walmart today, quit working after a rain. Yeah, you're going to get returns. Yeah, you know what? That, that's one thing. The percentages should stay about the same, but you are going to see a higher number of returns in the, the next few weeks just because you sold more than you normally do. So you're going to get more return. But as a percentage, it should still be somewhere around that one and a half to two percent, which is fairly normal. SR says, so uh, will you be buying toy inventory during February blowout sales? If they're nationwide sales, like, uh, you know, Target does a big August clearance sale every year. I tend to shy away from those. It's just not something that excites me. I like to find the, uh, you know, and I say this every year too. I like to go to places like grocery stores that don't normally sell toys and buy them up in December and January when they're trying to clear out the, the bad buys or the leftover stock that they have because they're a grocery store or a, a, a pharmacy, you know, 
they're not really a toy store, but they buy heavy in toys, obviously, going into the Christmas season. Well, if they guessed wrong, um, you can you can benefit from their mistake. So, you know, I like to shop those kind of places where it's going to be store by store. It might be regional, but the, the big national, uh, like Target, Target clearance, I hate. I honestly do. Because every Target clearance is all the same stuff, and you don't know what the next Target has the percentage at. You know, you may be at 50%. And uh, John Grolo is down in Jacksonville grabbing that same stuff up at 70%. Well, you're going to get kind of kicked, all right? Now, Target has some great opportunities, but I, I'm just not a big fan of Target clearance because it's all the same clearance in all the stores. And it's just very competitive. So, no, I don't jump on that. What I like to do <clears throat> is hit up some of the more regional type stuff after Christmas. <clears throat> and then throughout the year, yeah, I'll buy toys, but it's got to be the right kind of toy at the right pl price where, you know, I'm not competing against a million other people. So I, I still do a lot of toys all year round, but no, not, not the national clearance. Um, and SR asked a follow-up, does anyone run one year behind by buying clothes out each holiday, I saw $1 license backpacks at Big Lots that I could hold all year. You can. Um, you sold toys all year. Was that wholesale? Some of it's wholesale. I sell, I sell a little bit of everything. I sell some clearance stuff. I sell uh, things that are on sale when I can get good stacks on coupons and along with the uh, discounts the stores running, that kind of thing. So yeah, some's wholesale, some some is RA at closeout stores or at um, you know like Big Lots it was great for Nerf water guns last year. I don't know why they got so many, but you could buy five and ten dollar water guns that were selling for twenty and thirty. You know, it, it was awesome. So I, I kind of like hitting that kind of stuff. Um, but would I buy seasonal to hold for the next year? I didn't used to. I might this year just because we're going to have more money. Um, so if I see some of that seasonal stuff that I think will do well the following year, I may very well buy some of it. I don't normally do that. I am not a long-term hold kind of guy. Uh, I, I did it with some Halloween things where I got what 70% off the Halloween items at uh, Kroger, again, regional grocery store, not big on seasonal stuff, had too much Halloween candy and, and crafts and all that left over, And I scooped some of those up. They don't take up much space. I'm going to set them in the corner and, you know, eight months from now in August, I'll send them back in and sell them at a profit. So there is definitely a, an opportunity there. I'm just not big on buying a bunch of inventory and then having it held. I don't have a warehouse, so I'm not, you know, my options are kind of limited. I do not want to fill my garage with a bunch of Christmas stuff to hold for the next eight to 10 months. It just doesn't work for me. If you have a storage area or if they're small items, then yeah, you can make some money on that, definitely. Uh, Mindy says, sell backpacks now. Christmas is the second back to school season. We only buy now what we can sell now. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, th this is this is the back to school, the, the mini back to school. I've said that before too, and Mindy, I absolutely agree. It is a mini back to school. Some of the Back to school items that we did not sell in August, we are able to sell quite a few of in December. And you'll be able to sell some in January as well when kids get off for, for Christmas break and then get ready to go back. You know, kids seem to, to wear out shoes and we'll have to buy new shoes in January. They um, get, sorry, had to, I wanted to mute that. Um, anything that somebody is buying in August, for school, they tend to turn around and buy in December and January for school again. So just kind of keep that in mind. There is definitely an opportunity for some of that stuff. So buy it now, send it in. Um, if it doesn't sell, you know, you'll be able to sell it in August. You may want to pull it back and then send it. You know, if it doesn't sell by say March, it's probably not going to sell. And I would pull it back so that you can send it back in in August without any issues. Remember Amazon kind of limited people that were pulling inventory in August and said, if you pull it after this date, you cannot send it back in until 
whatever the, the following date was. So I, I wish I, I knew those off the top of my head and I'm sorry that I don't, but you want to be aware of that. If, if that's part of your plan is to maybe pull a little early instead of waiting um, right up until your LTS is about to hit because you won't be able to send that inventory right back in. I would say if it's back to school, <laughs> yeah, Mindy knows what I'm talking about. He said they gave like 12 hours notice on that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, Barry. 12-1 was the penalty date. So if you pulled that inventory after like August 13th or 14th, you weren't going to be able to send it back in until December 1st. That is not exactly what you want to hear is you're getting close to back to school time that you're not going to be able to send those backpacks back in. So that's why I'm saying just kind of pull that, that inventory back early and that way you'll be able to send it without any problem. Um, yeah, Michael says you don't have an, uh, don't have a warehouse. Yes. Michael has been gracious and, and offered me, uh, <laughs> he's offered me access to his warehouse. Yes. But that doesn't help me if I'm doing a bunch of RA stuff, you know, and that, that's what I'm looking at is, you know, if I'm buying this stuff RA, then I'd have to ship it to Mike. I'm not sure that the numbers work, but <laughs> yeah, it is a long drive. Yes, sir. Uh, but Mike is very gracious with, with his warehouse and allowing me to use it if I need to. And I do thank you for that, sir. But, um, man, I can't believe this hour is gone already. So any other questions? It is actually right up at nine o'clock. Does anyone have any questions, anything? Anything you want me to cover? Um, I guess real, real quick, I do want to cover a couple of things. This road to 500K, I'll tell you one thing that was absolutely vital. Having help. Having somebody help me with the packing and shipping made the biggest difference in the world. And I, I've had Teresa for a little over a year now. But for her, um, I essentially, I either had to meet her, like we meet up halfway between our houses. We, we live about 40 minutes apart or so. Um, so we would either have to meet and I give her the inventory and let her take it. Or, you know, if it was online, then I could have it shipped to her. Having my niece help was, was tremendous because I could go buy inventory today, have it packed up tonight, have it ready to ship and maybe even catch the UPS on the way out and then go source the next day. And there, there wasn't that extra step of having to meet and, and drop stuff off with anyone which was um, extremely helpful. So having someone pack, um, someone doing the, the, the prep work for you was, was absolutely vital. Uh, second, I would say that was from a physical standpoint, um, not even second, just another component was the networking, absolutely vital. I've got a couple masterminds that are both great. They're, they're, they're different. We work on different things together, but both have been instrumental in our, in our success. Um, so networking and then utilizing different sourcing methods, definitely, you know, wholesale and RA and OA all kind of came into it. So that's how our business grew from, from being a $200,000 business to a half million dollar business. And that's, what's going to let us go from a half million to whatever next year holds whether it's 750 or a million or whatever it, it comes from building relationships, hiring out work that you can't do yourself. You can't do everything yourself. So the things that you can hire out, do it. Um, and the cash flow is huge. And that's what this Q4 is going to set up for you for next year. You're going to have the money now, liquid cash, to have as big a month as you want. I mean, think about it. If we're getting, let's, let's take 50,000. Let's be very conservative. Our next payout, $50,000. And that's, that's what we start January with. Well, if we bought and sold everything with that $50,000 in 30 days, that would be a hundred thousand dollar month just to start with, right? In sales. And that that's huge. You can't have a hundred thousand dollar month if you've got $2,000 to start with. So Use this Q4 to launch whatever it is you want to do in 2016. Start making your plans now. Um, hopefully, you've already given it some consideration. But know your business, know where you're at, and understand where your money is best utilized. And then get help where you need help. If, you, if you're not willing to sleep in a storage unit, well, you might want to hire some people to do the packing. Goose. <laughs> uh, 
I'm not willing to sleep in a storage unit. So I paid my niece and she had a couple of friends and that kind of stuff. So anyway, that, that, that's probably the big, big three things were the cash flow, the networking relationships and, uh, and getting help to get that much stuff shipped because it is, it's tough to, to move that much inventory on your own. I promise you. Yeah. I give, <laughs> I give goose huge props for that. He's crazy. Uh, yeah, sleeping in a <laughs> storage unit. Um, all right, Michael Flanagan says, Business 101 teaches you that cash flow is one, if not the most important keys to growing your business. Yes, I agree. I mean, if you don't have the money, there's nothing you can do. But know where you're at, know where your business is heading, know what's best for your business, and then execute, all right? Um, do not look at my half million or... Um, anyone else's million or 2 million or whatever the numbers are, or even, even 200,000. If you're just starting out with 500 bucks, you are not going to do 200,000 more than likely uh, in the next year. Now you might, it's possible. I've seen people do some crazy stuff. Chris Manise took 1500 and turned it into a couple hundred thousand. So it is possible. It is not easy. Uh, he's a very smart guy that used a lot of, of um, used a lot of things available to him, such as prep services to be able to do that. So it can be done if somebody, I say this all the time, if somebody is doing what you want to do, talk to them, ask them, get guidance from them. Uh, we've all kind of gone through the steps and that's what this road to 500 K was all about was just simply showing you guys week by week by week. What is it taking to, to, to do these incremental things that all at the end of the year you go, wow, that's a half million dollar seller or you know, if it's a, somebody else, they're a million dollar seller. Well, what I try to do is show you step by step exactly our growth throughout the year and, and how we did what we were doing. All right. So hopefully you guys got some good stuff out of that. Uh, will we do the road to a million next year? I don't know. Um, you guys are probably kind of bored with that kind of stuff. I think, I don't know. I have no idea where the show is going to go next year, but I am excited to have shared this journey with you. Uh, it's great to accomplish the 500 K. I appreciate all of you guys being here and uh, you know, we'll do it again next week and we'll, uh, we'll have one last show before Christmas. We'll probably take Christmas and then uh, the new year's maybe off. I don't know. Well, well, Christmas obviously is a Friday, so we won't do that. I don't know if we'll have a show the following week, but I do have to, I, I do plan to have a show next Wednesday. So I will see you guys next week. Uh, we'll see where things stand right before Christmas or right at the end of this big rush. Cause I'm telling you next week, like we did mark this, we did 5,700 on the show uh, show time today. Next week, I'll be surprised if we're at a thousand, that'll be the 23rd. I'll be surprised if we sell a thousand dollars that day. I don't think there's any way it'll happen. Yeah. So, uh, Mindy says, Lime, which I'm sure I mispronounced horribly, but thank you, sir. Um, thank you guys. All the congratulations. Uh, I do appreciate it. And um, yeah, I hope you, you got a little bit out of, of this journey to 500 K. I know I've learned a lot. I'm going to actually have to put it all together just to, to kind of have a more succinct answer to people, but it's been fabulous. And you guys have been awesome to show up every week and I greatly appreciate it. Uh, yes, I am buying drinks at ASD. So if I have told you at any point that I owe you a drink, find me at ASD. That's where you, you'll get it. Uh, but anyway, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for all the congratulations. I'll see you next week. Have a great week. Remember, this is probably the, the highest sales volume, maybe not the most profitable, but the highest sales volume of the whole year. People are going to be buying like mad this week. So if you want to dump inventory, if you want to raise prices and make more money, get on that. Um, watch your pricing. Control it. Understand it. All right. Guys, good night. We'll see you next week.